Well, I was interested in just especially now when so much progress is being made for civil rights for gay folks that I wanted to remind people what we, where we come from and who we are and that there is this element of self-loathing to us and, and editing ourselves and shush, don't say that and don't be that way. Uh, more than any other community that I've seen. This is set in 1930s in New York City and uh, in the world of burlesque. It was pretty much in its heyday, but it's at a point where uh, LaGuardia was now starting to shut down the burlesque theaters. We're still paying homage to the glory days of it, but also looking at a time when it was starting to become dangerous to be a part of. Even in the gay culture, people do not realize how difficult it was in the 30s and 40s for people not only to get together, but to have a life, to not feel marginalized. And here's a character, sort of a Camille del Arte character in an odd way, who is being taken out. It's about this, this love affair between two gay men and how, in a way, it jeopardizes the burlesque house because LaGuardia is closing down the burlesque houses and Nathan's character, the Nance, is considered deviant. I think he had a very hard life and especially, I, you know, I just think he was berated and beaten up as a child and just for being a sissy and then, and then has invented this persona of Chauncey Miles, whoever that is, you know, this, I think he made up that name. I don't think that's his real name. And I think, you know, he has a very protective shell and the notion of, you know, all these, so, you know, he refers to Roosevelt as a socialist because of all these programs he's starting. And, you know, when, when, when am I going to get my hand out? Who's going to, you know, I had to do everything myself. So I don't want, you know, why should everybody else be getting that? And so you sort of understand the politics of it. Well, my character specifically kind of at the top of the play comes to New York looking to become who I, who I, want to be who I'm meant to be and so I meet Nathan early on and uh, we kind of go on this journey together it's kind of the heart of the story is this this relationship it's about self-loathing and and uh, and kind of screwing up a good thing and I have this adversarial relationship with a loving but adversarial relationship with it where I'm saying can't you please you know not be yourself so much you know to get married I say to him and then sadly, it's, the story is the unraveling of all of that, of everything he believes in. It's all pulled out from under him. This world of this play, as far as the entertainment of burlesque, lives somewhere in between the Ziegfeld Follies and Saturday Night Live, right? Uh, thrown into 1937. Modern audiences may not know it, but those of us who do know the Niagara Falls sketch. There's, there's just several sketches that are iconic. Uh, and then Glenn Kelly has written music that is so of the era. I mean, it's, it's seamless. He's just taken that, uh, the, the energy, the feel of the era and, and written us some, I mean, I wish we were doing a soundtrack. I mean, doing a cast album because it's so good. You live for a day like this where you're in a room where everyone is extraordinary, everyone's really gifted at what they do, and at the same time, it's, it's tough. Every time you're up to bat, you're like, I'm up to bat with some of the best players in this business. And, um, but it's been a ball. It's so much fun to be around Nathan, who is an extraordinarily gifted actor as well as obviously comedian, but it's so much fun to watch him explore and do things. And Jack O'Brien also, and Doug, create such a safe environment that we just say, what about this? What about this? And we're all having a lot of time. There's a lot of laughter in rehearsal. Now, the great thing about this piece, which was written for him, for Nathan, by Doug, and the great thing about doing it is that it's got both ends of the spectrum. He gets a chance in this piece to do some of the funniest stuff you've ever seen in your life and then to break your heart. It's just a great room to be in. Uh, Jack O'Brien is, uh, you know, at the top of his game, and he's been... He's so smart about this play, and um, and everybody is just just really talented people and uh, just doing their work, and um, so it makes it a, a pleasure to go to work every day. Jack O'Brien is as good as it gets. Ann Roth, the costume designer, is a genius. Douglas Carter Bean is fabulous, and it's it's hilarious and it's dangerous and it has a tragic dimension, and it's like no play that I think anybody's seen.